Hi there and welcome as we discover three keys of becoming a witness to Jesus in our world. And these three keys is that over life you would progressively grow in love with Jesus, you would discover your design in Jesus, and you would introduce others to Jesus. In our final of these sessions, I want to just stir you a little bit with this one thought. What are the fear and the first steps that we need to deal with. 1 Peter 3, 14 says, but even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear them or be intimidated, but in your hearts regard Christ, the Lord is holy, and ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Now, studies have shown that the fear of public speaking trumps even insects and death for most people. So the reality is the fear that's playing into me not wanting to speak in front of people, it's the same fear that's playing into being a witness for Jesus in everyday life. It's these same issues being the focus of attention, wondering how people are perceiving me, saying the wrong thing and being embarrassed, or the risk of rejection. But do you notice the common theme between all of those things? The focus is on me. And what we are called to is to live a life where we are turning attention away from ourselves and putting it on those whom God loves, those who are yet to know Jesus. And if I do that, then I will see my focus shifting outward on the listeners and their needs, on the lost and where they are. And the more genuine concern and love I have for them, the less fear will control me. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is possible. And so shouldn't we just pray for more boldness? Yes, but in the Bible, boldness is simply doing what God has commanded you to do, not mechanically trying to imitate what other people are doing. So yes, when God calls you out of the boat in a conversation, in a relationship, be bold and do what he says. But let's maybe look at the truth behind some of the fears that we harbor when it comes to this. The first fear is how will others respond to me? And the truth is evangelism is God's work, not ours. When we share our faith, we assume that people are responding to us, but I think they are responding to where they are in their journey with God at that point. Maybe a second fear is, but what if I fail? The truth is God never asks you to be successful. He asks you to be faithful. The way that someone responds to the message that you share with them in your relationship in life, that is their decision. And they are making that choice. If you think about tennis, the analogy would be that we are called to serve. We are not called to control how the person on the other side of the net returns that shot. Maybe the third fear would be that, what if I don't have all the right answers? Well, the truth is, it's okay to say, you know what, I don't know, but let's find out together. It doesn't mean that the other person has won or that now you've lost someone for the kingdom. God is always still at work in that person's life. Maybe another fear would be, but I have character flaws, I'm not perfect. The truth is we are all forgiven and covered with grace, none of us are perfect. So Satan will always try and convince you that it's only when you've reached some kind of arrival place as a Christian that now you can start speaking out, that is a lie. The fifth one could be that I don't wanna to speak to strangers. And the truth is that most of the time we will not speak to strangers. Yes, there are moments when God really has someone's number and there's a divine appointment and if he's leading you to do it, be brave, step out. But most of the time for most of us, it will be in the context of the relationships with the people that God has already set up in our sphere. Maybe the final one is, but what if I get corrupted by hanging out with the people of the world? God says that we are meant to be in the world, but not of the world. But the church has mixed that up so much that often for fear of the one, we're not doing the other. And rather we should have the good tension to say, this is the three-legged stool that we should have. Number one, stay close to God for integrity and strength of character. But stay close to unbelievers and relationship for influence and connection. And thirdly, stay close to your believing brothers and sisters in the faith for accountability and partnership. God has made you for this. So step into those fears, trust Him, and become a witness.